All right, Shalom to the elect, excuse me, of the nation of Israel. And once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh, which is the name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, which is the name of his only begotten son. The Hebrew words Bahasham is in the name. All praises and glories definitely do. Especially in the times we're living in, you know, we're in the last days of this Edomite's kingdom and Yahweh Shai is on his way to destroy this man's kingdom. And that's what we're patiently waiting for. All right, so you see the question on, on screen here, a question that I asked Google because I wanted to know, and that is, where did Apostle James wrote his letter you know the epistle of james and um check this out as i was reading it which i'm going to go to it this is from wikipedia that that was the first source that came up when i asked google where did apostle james wrote his letter and the first source that came up as you clearly see here is wikipedia so if we click on it epistle of james this is wikipedia uh, the epistle of James, which the word epistle means letter. The epistle of James is a general epistle and one of the 21 epistles, uh, didactic letters in the New Testament. And we know the majority of the uh, didactic letters were, was written by the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul even had certain men under him that wrote for him. Uh, Timothy was one of them. Uh, I believe Titus was another one. And um, Onesimus, I think the brother's name was Onesimus. He was one of, one, of, one of the men that wrote for the Apostle Paul. But the words were coming from the Apostle Paul. Anyway, he wrote the majority of the uh, epistles. But every now and then you had... You had uh, one of the apostles, the original apostles, the 12, that is, that wrote epistles, such as Peter. Peter wrote an epistle because you got the book of 1 Peter. You got 2 Peter. Uh, also, um, John, Apostle John wrote epistles. Besides the book of Revelation, Apostle John wrote 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. And those are some powerful epistles epistles okay so is uh, uh, uh peter's uh, uh, epistles and james epistles now this james check this out this james there because we know there was two james there was there was uh what esau calls james the greater and that was the brother of john apostle john that i spoke about then you had another james now guess what that james was yahweh biological brother as we'll prove in this lesson and even here in Wikipedia, now check check out what they wrote here. James 1 and 1 identifies the author as James, the servant of God and of the Lord Yahweh Shai, who is writing to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. And the, the answer is he, he wrote that letter, James, from Jerusalem. He wrote that letter from Jerusalem. So he wrote it to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, right? Then it goes on to say, the epistle is traditionally attributed to James, the brother of Jesus. <laughs> James, the brother of Jesus. Now, we don't like to say Jesus because his name is not Jesus. His name is Yahweh Shai. So right there, they're telling you that James was the biological brother of Yahweh Shai. That's why they put James, the brother of Jesus. But his name is Yahweh Shai. That's his true name, which we already knew that. We already knew that. Uh, the scriptures tell us that Yahweh Shai had biological brothers and sisters. Now, the, uh, the, the plantation Christianity, the Catholic Church and these different religions, they don't accept that. You know, they believe in, in, in uh, the, uh, the, the immaculate conception and that no, no one really knows who, who the father, <laughs> who uh, 
the father of the Lord was, which is total nonsense. You know, the, the, his townspeople knew because uh, if you go in the book of um, if you go in the book of uh, uh, what is is that Luke? Let me let me see if I can find it. Is not. It might be Mark. Is not this. Okay, it's, it's actually the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew. Now, here's a super clue. Matthew, the 13th chapter. And uh, I'll start the 50, 53rd verse. And it came to pass that when Yahawashai had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, his own country, I mean his own town's people, right? His hood, like they would say, in this day and age, they would say, my hood, when he came to his hood, his hood, all right? <laughs> this is my hood, you know? When he was come into his own country, his hood, he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said, whence have this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Now, wait a minute. If it was known among his hood, his townspeople, that his father might have been an angel, like some people actually believe, they wouldn't have been offended by Yahushai. They would say, well, he got those, those mighty works and that great wisdom. You know his father was an angel, right? His father was an angel. Doesn't make sense, man. His father was not an angel. His father, he had a normal father just like all of us, okay? It's just that his father happened to come from the line of David, the line of King David. He was of the house of King David, that lineage. And, his, and the name of his father was Joseph. I mean, think about it. If, if, the Holy Spirit, if this is what people believe, if the Holy Spirit was the father of Yahushai, right? The Holy Spirit impregnated Mary, right? He had this super miraculous birth, right? With the wisdom that he had and the mighty works that he did, people would have accepted him. They would have said, well, you know, his father was of the Holy Spirit. His father was an angel. So yeah, we expect him to do these miraculous things. The answer is his father was not an angel. His father was not a, his father was not the Holy Spirit. His father was an actual living, breathing, fleshly man whose name was Joseph, whose occupation was a carpenter. Okay, <laughs> and he was of the house of David, meaning the lineage of David. So that's just one thought I got to put out there. Whence have this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Now. This confirms what I just said. This is the book of Matthew 13 and 55. Is not this the carpenter's son? Wait a minute. Who's this carpenter? Joseph. So the townspeople knew his kinfolk. They knew his relatives. They knew his, his mama, or I should say they know his papa and his mama. Okay? <laughs> we know your papa and your mama. Okay? The carpenter's son was Joseph. Okay, Joseph was the carpenter and his son was Yahushai that they're talking about. Let me say it again. Joseph was the carpenter that they're talking about here. Is not this the carpenter's son? That was Joseph. They're talking about Joseph and his son was Yahushai. That's why Yahushai himself became what? A carpenter. And at the age of 30, he gave that up to start his ministry. Okay? So is not this the carpenter's son? That would be Yahweh Shai. And Joseph was his father, the carpenter. Is not his mother called Mary? So they're talking about Joseph and Mary here. And his brethren, listen good, his brothers, his biological brothers. Yahweh Shai was the first. And then there was a succession of brothers that came after him. These are their names. James and Josies. James is the same James we're going to talk about. When we read about the epistle of James, James was the biological brother of Yahushai, and he was one of the, one of the, the uh, 12 apostles, the original 12. James and Joses. Joses was not. Joses was not part of the original 12 apostles. And Simon, Simon was not. And Judas, Judas was. So among the 12 apostles, you had two 
that was Yahweh's biological brothers, James and Jude, or Judas. Judas, also known as Jude, which was a common name, wrote the book of Jude. It's only one chapter long, but it's a very powerful book. As a matter of fact, um, we go into the history of that book, why it was written. It was uh, Elder Yashuamba that brought out the information of why that book was written. Because in the days of Jude, when you read that book, Jude, in those days, there, there were a lot of apostate churches. Look up the term apostate, because he only had one pure doctrine, and that was the doctrine of Yahweh Shai, the doctrine that Yahweh Shai taught. That was the pure doctrine. So you had a lot of Israelites that kind of learned that doctrine and deviated from it. This is what the Apostle Paul talked about uh, when he said in Acts tw uh, 20 and 28. Matter of fact, let's get, get that real quick. We're going to come back to that scripture. Acts, because I don't want to quote it wrong. Acts 20 and 28. Uh, Acts 20 and 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which... The Holy Spirit have made you overseers to feed the church of the Heavenly Father, which he have purchased with his own blood. For this I know that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you. So these were guys that learned about the doctrine of Yahweh Shai, but left it and started creating their own doctrines, their own doctrines. So they became what is called apostates, A P O S. T-A-T-E-S, apostates, okay? That's what they became. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, which is a, met a, 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 a metaphor for apostates of the faith, not sparing the flock. They didn't care about the flock. So they were teaching those, uh, those false doctrines, not caring about the flock, not caring if they corrupted the faith of the flock. That's what it means, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. All right. So those are what you call apostates. And that's what prompted Jude to write his book. And who is this Jude? We just found out. For those of you that are new, this Jude was the brother of Yahweh Shai. He was also brother to James. That's why when you read Jude, the first chapter, the first verse, Jude, the servant of Yahweh Shai, and also his biological brother. How powerful is that? Jude, the servant of Yahweh Shai, and brother of James. Now, we're going to read in the book of Galatians, which was an epistle wrote, wrote by the Apostle Paul. We're going to read where, when the Apostle Paul went to Jerusalem, okay, he made a trip to Jerusalem. He's, uh, I believe this is where he said he abode with Peter 15 days, but he didn't see any of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. You're going to clearly see that when we read that in Galatians, the book of Galatians, all right? Jude, the servant of Yahweh Shai, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by the heavenly father and preserved in Yahweh Shai, that's the elect, by the way, and called, okay? So as we read in the book of James, he speaks about, well, let's read the fourth verse. <clears throat> For there are certain men crept in unawares. And again, when you go into the information, the information that uh, Elder Yashwanba brought out, the reason why James, or rather Jude, wrote that book, because he was inflamed, he was totally upset by all the apostate churches that was popping up, individuals that was perverting the gospel, just like we got now, just like we got now. You had that more than 2,000 years ago. Guys would learn the pure truth. But then, they, they, uh, um, how's it go? They would not endure sound doctrine, so they deviated and formed their own religion. You know, they formed their own doctrine, and they became apostates, okay? And that's what Jude is talking about. For there are certain men crept in unawares who, who, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. So, really, the main reason why they did it, deviate from the pure truth, is because they were chosen to do that by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai. They were chosen to do that. That was their lot. Remember that uh, if we go in the book of Ezekiel, all up now, let's go in the book of Ezekiel 14 and 9. Let's read that. The same way the, the Heavenly Father chooses the true prophets is the same way He also chooses the false prophets. Remember the, heavenly, the duality of the Heavenly Father. He controls both sides. 
So here we're going to clearly read it. Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel 14 and 9. And if the prophet be deceived, when he have spoken a thing, like your apostates, right? They were deceived, right? I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. So the Heavenly Father put a reprobate spirit on those apostates to become reprobates. That's why, man, the, the smartest and, and most fearful thing we can do is to fear the Lord, Yahweh Barshim Yahushai. Okay, that's why it is written, the deceived and the deceiver are his. Clearly that's written. Okay, the Heavenly Father can show you the truth and keep you in the truth, but he, all, he can also deceive you and keep you out of the truth. Check that out, man. And if the prophet be deceived when he have spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. And I will stretch. So, wait a minute. The Lord deceived this prophet. Then he, then what do he say he's going to do? And I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. Wow. So the Heavenly Father, are you listening to what's being said here? The Heavenly Father deceived this individual and then he's still going to turn around and judge that individual. Most probably for brutal death because a false prophet... What's the punishment of a false prophet? Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 13 and 5. Can you see why Yahweh Bar Shimei Ashai must be feared? Deuteronomy 13 and 5. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. But wait a minute. It's the Heavenly Father who deceived him. But then the Heavenly Father is going to turn around and judge him. Put him to death. Okay? <laughs> and that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. Because he have spoken to turn you away from the Lord your power. But remember, we just read, the Lord boldly said, he boldly said, if a prophet speaks an untruth, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. Not only that, I deceived him, I'm going to turn around and judge him. I'm going to put him to death. Remember, the issues of death come from who? The Heavenly Father, Psalm 68 and 20. You see? This is why we keep telling you, brothers, man. We keep telling you, we keep telling you to fear the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahushai. This is why it is written, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Because you learn stuff like this. You learn scriptures like this. And it gives you a newfound respect for the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son. That's what it does. Okay? And that prophet or that dream of dreams shall be put to death because he have spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God. But remember, the Heavenly Father is the one that put that reprobate spirit on that deceiver, that dream of dreams, that false prophet, to go off. Okay? So, <laughs> never forget that. Which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shall thou put a put the evil away from the midst of thee. And there's even the scripture where, where one time the Heavenly Father stirred up evil. As a matter of fact, speaking of evil, who created evil? Who created evil? Isaiah 45 and 7. I formed, again, this, these are the words of the Heavenly Father speaking through the prophet Isaiah, right? He said, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. I make peace and create what? Evil. So the Lord can create evil, put an evil spirit on you, then turn around and judge you. Now tell me if that isn't something to fear. <laughs> That's why King David wisely said, let the, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Yahweh Barshim Yahushai. And we all pray that Yahweh Barshim Yahushai don't put a reprobate spirit on us. Okay, so clearly in Ezekiel 14 and 9, we learn that if, if, a, if one is deceived, that the Heavenly Father have deceived that individual. Okay, so going back to Jude, for there, there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. By who? By the Heavenly Father. <laughs> they were ordained to this condemnation by the Heavenly Father. Ungodly men, ungodly men, turning the grace of our Lord into the list into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord power in our Lord Yahweh Shai. So that was going on hot and heavy in, in Jude's day. Okay, there was a lot of churches popping up that were apostate churches, just like you got now. And Jude, Jude was, got real pissed off about that and that prompted him to write his letter. Okay, that's the whole story behind the book of Jude. Okay, 
And we're learning from it to this very day. Remember Romans 15 and 4. Whatsoever things were, were written aforetime were written for our learning. Okay, so going back to Apostle Paul in Acts 20, he already warned of this. He said, Acts 20 and 29, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. And that's why Jude wrote his book. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them, your apostates. Therefore watch and remember, and this is why we constantly watching, you know, not only are we watching for prophecies to line them up in the scriptures, we're also watching these, these uh, apostates. Okay, uh, another title for them is the synagogue of Satan. When you go in the book of Revelation, when it, when it uh, 2 and 9, do you know what that's really talking about? That's, that was really talking about the same apostate churches that Jude was talking about. Let's go to that. Revelation 2 and 9. That's the, that's the, the true understanding of Revelation 2 and 9. Now, we use it for the small hatters, the 1948ers, but the true understanding of that was Yahweh Shai speaking about those apostate churches, that he's well aware of those apostate churches. He's well aware of them in the spirit because he was speaking to Apostle John from the spirit world. In a vision, okay, when Apostle John received all those those uh, uh, visions, which uh, brought about the book of Revelation. These are nothing but visions that the Apostle John received, and part of those visions, Yahweh was actually speaking to him from the spirit world, okay? So, Revelation 2 and 9, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, those are your apostates. Would say they are Jews, meaning what? Well, well, here's a good example. You're wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes. Okay? To say you're a Jew means you kept the law, statutes, and commandments. A lot of them were hypocrites. That's why Yahweh Shai said, do as they say, but not as they do. Okay? So, and I know the blasphemy of them would say they are Jews. Now you know what that really means. Okay? Now we use that scripture for the... For the uh, the small hatters, because they're the ones saying they're Jews now. But back then, those were. This was really talking about wicked Israelites that were apostates of the faith. They say they are Jews, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So your apostates, another title for their church is the synagogue of Satan, and this we got that right now. Certain groups that are nothing but apostates, apostate churches, i.e., synagogues of Satan. Okay, synagogues of Satan. So that's what that really means. All right, so going back to Acts 20, and, and this is why the Apostle Paul said, man, he, he wept over this thing. He, uh, well, let's read it. A Acts 20 and 30. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things. And we have this now. You know, oh, we don't know the name of the Father and the Son. That is perverse. Okay, that is perverse. And, and all these other doctrines out there from these different Israelite groups that are straight up and down perverse. Okay, also of your own self shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. That's why they're doing it. They want the fame and ultimately they want the money. Okay, and the Apostle Paul goes on to say, therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years, I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. So the Apostle Paul was really heavy over this thing. And, and we're talking about a man who was, um, uh, he, he spoke about his folly, his folly being the Apostle Paul, that is, his folly being extremely, <laughs> extremely jealous over the men of the Lord. He said that, the Apostle Paul said that. So can you imagine how it hurt, how his heart was hurt? By seeing all these apostate churches popping up, you know, perverting the doctrine that he learned from Yahweh Shai, perverting Yahweh Shai's doctrine, the same way we are now. Beginning with Elder Apostle Tower and Down, the same way we are now, we're very hurt inside when we see these other groups uh, um, uh, mangling the doctrine. These other apostate groups, these synagogues of Satan. Okay? So there you go. So going back to our initial title kind of went off in another tangent, but hopefully, you know, it was edifying to you brothers and you sisters out there, especially, you know, really to you brothers. Uh, Matthew 13 and 55, is not this the carpenter's son? 
Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joses and Simon and Judas? So yes, Yahweh Shai had biological brothers. Now, if we go in the book of Galatians, which I mentioned earlier, Galatians, the first chapter, where the Apostle Paul said he, uh, let me see if I can find it. Here we go, Galatians 1 and 18. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem. This is the Apostle Paul speaking to the Israelites in Galatia, right? He said, then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But other of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. So when I asked Google, where did James write his letter or wrote his letter, the epistle of James, it said Jerusalem. So that was accurate because the apostle Paul went to Jerusalem and he didn't see any of the other apostles except Peter and James. So when it says here, all right, so, so this is accurate. When it says, basically, when I asked the question to Google, where did James write his epistle from, his letter from, it said Jerusalem. Okay, and then it went on to say that um, James is the brother of Jesus here, but we know his name is Yahweh Shai. And that's accurate. Okay, now let's let's... Pay attention, pay attention. Galatians 1 and 18. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But other of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. James, the Lord's brother, his biological brother. He was one of the four brothers mentioned in Matthew, okay, which we just read it. Oh, hold on, I shouldn't have did that. I shouldn't have did that. Um, I'm going to bring that back up on the screen. Yeah, okay, good. Matthew 13 and 55. Is not this the carpenter's son? Now, that's the townspeople. When you read the whole story, the townspeople were offended in Yahweh Shai. Many of them did not accept Yahweh Shai because they knew his family. They knew his father and knew his mother. So they said, is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his, his mother called Mary? And his brethren, his brothers, James and Joses and Simon and Judas. Now this James here is the same James that that Apostle Paul is talking about that he saw besides Peter. Let's read it again. Galatians 1 and 19. But other of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. And he called him the Lord's brother. Because <clears throat> indeed he was. He was the Lord's brother. So Yahweh Shai had biological brothers and biological sisters. There's another scripture where it speaks about his sisters. Now, mind you, none of the names of his sisters is mentioned. <laughs> it shows you that the women are uh, not really important as the men are. Okay, There's a couple of scriptures. Matthew 13 and 56. And his sisters are the... Matter of fact, I have to go to it. Because it's not giving me everything. Oh, I could have just kept reading. Matthew 13 and 55. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joses and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then have this man all these things? And they were offended in him. And they were offended in him. Now, mind you, if it was known that his father was an angel or his father was the Holy Spirit, they wouldn't have been offended in him. Okay? They wouldn't have been offended in him. They were offended in him because they knew his family. They knew he had biological brothers and sisters. And they were offended in him. But Yahweh Shai said unto them, A prophet, and he's speaking of himself, is not without honor save in his own country and his own house. His own house. What does that mean? His, 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 oh my goodness. His biological kin, man. That's what that means. His own house means his biological kin, his brothers and his sisters. Biological brothers and sisters. Not half brothers, not cousins. Biological brothers and sisters. Okay? Which he had. All right? <laughs> Let's get another one. 
because I saw another one. I think I saw one in Mark. So this is some powerful information. This, this is really a mystery, you know. Um, there's not, not too many people know this. Okay, here's the one I saw in Mark. We're going to go right to it. Mark 6 and 3. Well, let's start the first verse. Pretty much Mark is saying the same thing that, you have, that um, Matthew said. Mark 6 and 1. And he went out from thence and came into his own country. And his disciples followed him or follow him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence have this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him? that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. Is not this the carpenter? <laughs> Which Yahushua's occupation before he started being a minister was a carpenter, just like his father Joseph. Is not this the carpenter? Now the other version said, is not this the carpenter's son? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joses, and of Judah, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. The same thing that Matthew said. Okay? And as we read on, But Yahweh said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. See? In his own house. Talking about what? His family. So did Yahweh have biological brothers and sisters? Absolutely Yes. And the scriptures prove it. All right, so on that note, I'm going to end it there. Hopefully you were edified. On to the next one.